This has never happened before in the history of the United States, probably in the history of any other country. We're going to talk about what's going on financially here in the U.S. Uh, first, please make sure you like, subscribe, get us going here on this channel. Hey, everybody, you're watching Bull Boom Bear Bust. Back with another dose of economic reality. We're going to get into something that's never happened here before. But first, I want to get into this. The IMF is warning the United States. And then we're going to look at a chart here to sh show you why they're warning us. And I say us. Uh, some of you are joining in from Canada, some from other countries. Hello and thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Uh, the debt situation in this country is going out of control. Now, people have been saying that for years. Even back, I remember back when the debt was like eight trillion, they said this is unsustainable. Uh, how long can this last? Here we are now, 34, gonna be hitting 35 trillion. Beyond anyone's imagination, right? No one ever thought that it could get this crazy, that it could get this wild. But here's the thing, there's no limit to the amount of debt. And this goes back to the system of money. This goes back to the fact that the fiat, uh, that the currency is fiat, fiat currency. It's not backed by anything, meaning, Click of a mouse, you can create trillions of dollars. And, um, you know, we're seeing the repercussions of it right now. We're seeing the inflation, a lot of other issues causing the inflation, of course. But the main problem behind this is the way money is just conjured, right, out of thin air. Uh, here's what I want to um, get into, though. Bring up a screenshot here. IMF steps up its warning over spending and ballooning debt. So what are they saying here? The International Monetary Fund unusually direct criticism at U.S. policymakers Tuesday, saying the country's recent standout performance among advanced economy, economies <laughs> was in part driven by an unsustainable fiscal policy. Folks, we all know that when a lot of money is pumped into the economy, it makes the economy look good. The same thing when consumers go out and spend a bunch of money, right? It makes the economy look good. Spending money velocity it creates this illusion of a growing economy, and I'm putting up quotation marks, right? So debt accumulation is also being labeled as growth, um, which it really shouldn't. Uh, true growth should be the wealth of the individual, right? We're not seeing that. We're seeing growth uh, as far as uh, wealth. We're seeing growth amongst the top 10%, 20%, but the bottom 60 70% especially not doing so well, in fact. Uh, that particular percentage group, that category, has been going deeper into debt for a long time. And living paycheck to paycheck, the savings rate is plunged near an all-time low. Uh, continues here, though, with this article here. Uh, this is via uh, Bloomberg. U.S. deficit spending has been driven in recent years by stimulus, aggressive investments in infrastructure and clean energy, and exploding interest costs. Uh, but let's take a look, though, because you all know this, right? But let's take a look at this chart here because a picture tells a thousand words. With inflation, a picture tells a million words, I guess. Let me bring this up here. I know, not funny. Dad joke. Um, government expenditures, folks. Uh, why is it cut off? Hang on, let me fix this. Sorry. Let's look to the far edge here, and you'll see that we've never seen debt explode at this velocity, right? So we look back. We see periods where there was economic downturns. The spending actually decreased. Look at the dot-com bust 2000. Look at the financial crisis right there where my cursor is at. Look at 2020, uh, the dip, but then followed by this extraordinary uh, debt binge that, again, we've never seen it happen uh, this steeply, the steep of an incline in the increase of velocity in the amount of debt. So, of course, inflation is not going away. And you may see price corrections here and there because there are a lot of bubbles out there. But this has never happened. This never happened in the financial crisis. This didn't happen before that, dot-com bust. And, um, you know, this could make these bubbles uh, stay inflated. I mean, we're going to see some deflation. Obviously, we're seeing deflation in, in a few different areas, right? Homes, somewhat, but that depends on your location. In some areas, home prices are still going up. Um, electric vehicles, that was a huge, huge bubble. Uh, that bubble has burst with electric vehicles down over 30 percent some models more um the rent bubble i think rents in a bubble it was uh propped up rents were propped up by all these uh protection programs where people couldn't get evicted still happening in some cities by the way rents finally starting to come down um you know so a lot of things to think about here when you look at the uh the cost of living prices inflation 
And when people think about inflation, they think about their own pocketbooks, right? But what's coming down besides a few things that I mentioned, right? I may, I may be forgetting a couple things, but food's going up, energy's going up, insurance is going up, right? Everything's going up, the cost of living is going up. We've got restaurants out here in California unable to pay this $20 minimum wage now for, for uh, fast food workers. And uh, a lot of businesses are folding and they're going to uh, they're going to raise their prices first, of course. But then once the sales plunge because people can't afford it, more people are going to start eating at home. You're going to see a whole bunch of fast food restaurants go out of business here in California. It's already happening, but a whole bunch more. I think we're just seeing the tip of it. Uh, I think we're just seeing the uh, the beginning of it. All right, but a couple other things I wanted to get into here. Um, we know with this type of money uh, being pumped into the economy that inflation's here to stay, right? But I was pretty surprised today, actually, uh, from Jerome Powell, uh, the Fed chair here. Jerome Powell says there's been, quote, lack of further progress this year on inflation. Did you guys watch his speech? Um, I watched it. He actually did what I expected. He read a lot of his answers. It looked like he was reading them off of a pages there, a script. Um, but he actually did some, um, looks like, off-the-cuff type of responses. I was a little bit surprised. But uh, even he's finally admitting it. I think the jokes just got too much to where, you know, these guys are always wrong. How are these guys always wrong? And how do you make, was it $30, $40 million uh, when you're wrong that much? And we're talking about his net worth. We're talking about Jay Powell from the Fed. In fact, um, take a look at this first. I couldn't believe this. Here is his salary, supposedly. Right, two hundred and forty-six thousand dollars. Right, not bad, not bad. Um, but take a look at this. It's out of fortune. Um, well, this was um, must have been older because the salary was one ninety. Uh, there. Okay. Anyways, here's what I wanted you to see. His net worth, folks. If this is correct, his net worth is between twenty and fifty-five million dollars. How do you make? Let's say two hundred thousand a year. That's called insider insider trading. Yes, exactly. The one who controls the monetary system, or at least the one that's the talking head uh, of who controls the monetary system, uh, controls the economy. Basically, uh, is yeah. I think they've got the inside track <laughs> on what stacks to buy, what stacks to dump. All right. Uh, so crazy, folks. And yet, with that type of net worth and that type of income he still gets it wrong people like me people like you obviously we were on this years ago we knew that inflation wasn't coming down uh although it may slow down we're not going to get back to the cost of living uh to where we were pre-2020 unless we make some drastic drastic changes to the way money's just pumped out of thin air pumped into existence right so that's why we do try to talk about real assets here in real money which is precious metals gold and silver and we see the BRICS nations out there integrating metals now into their trading but things are happening very very slowly and uh you know some people had predicted a skyrocketing gold and silver price we're actually finally starting to see some movement though in positive territory we got gold at 23.98 uh oil just under 85 dollars a lot of people thought oil would go up a lot higher with all the conflicts happening right now including what's happening now in the middle east but you also have to factor lack of demand into that as more people get maxed out and close to their limits on these credit cards. Uh, will there be a big drop off in demand? Well, I think it's likely. Um, but yet again, we've got traders out there predicting this, which is pretty scary. Out of oilpress.com here, traders bracing for $250 oil or traders placing bets on $250 oil. So does someone see some big conflicts happening in the oil producing countries in the OPEC uh, OPEC nations that could lead to, this, lead to this drastic price in oil? I hope not. Um, if this does happen, get ready to sell your four cylinder vehicle if you have a four cylinder because everybody's going to be going out buying four cylinders. We'll probably have a renewed man, uh, renewed demand rather for electric vehicles. And uh, I remember back in 2008 when oil went to like a hundred and something dollars. So I went in and got a six cylinder at a very good deal. I got a Honda Pilot. Um, if oil hits 250, which I would be shocked, but if it did, I'd have to go out and buy probably a, a six or eight cylinder vehicle because you're going to get a very good deal on those more uh, gas guzzler type of vehicles. I'd probably get a 
Toyota 4Runner. I've been wanting a 4Runner for a while. If this happens to oil, I think you're going to see a huge drop in larger vehicles, especially in the six to eight cylinders. Six cylinders are still pretty good on gas. So are some eight cylinders, but you know uh, that's what I saw happen last time with the big spike in oil. I um, wanted to get into this here next. Um, did I share the screen, by the way? No, I didn't share it here. Here it is. Trader's bet on $250 oil. Sorry, folks. I'm really tired today. Only got maybe three and a half hours sleep due to some um, things I had to do. I had to stay up very late to get a project done. Something outside of this channel. So I'm, I'm really tired. So I probably stumbled my words today more than normal. <laughs> um, how interest rates may stay high as inflation progress stalls. We finally, <laughs> we finally hear uh, some facts out of the guy there. So, um, wow, pretty shocking, folks, to finally hear this. And I really hope I see every one of you on our next report. Please make sure you are still subscribed and hopefully see you in the next video. Keep stacking, everybody. Peace.